Welcome to Exceptional Educators Playbook. I'm Chastity Craft, the Literacy Consultant here at KBEC, and with me today is Miss Vonda Adams. She's our Elementary Math Consultant here at KBEC, and we are going to um, be talking um, about some instructional strategies today on our podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to offer professional learning opportunities to meet the needs of our teachers while giving um, teachers a platform to share their expertise. So every month we're going to highlight a different topic that uh, will be most beneficial for teachers. Um, each week the topic is going to be broken down into content specific categories. So week one will explain what it would look like in literacy and that will, what, is what we're going to do today. Week two will show how it works in math. Week three will allow you to look at it through a social emotional lens and week four is going to show you some modifications and um, some um, um, and how that would look in the low incidence community. And um, we will encourage you to have any questions um, to drop in the chat. That's what Ms. Bondo will monitor the chat. And uh, also, uh, if you're not watching live, then you can uh, email with questions and we'll get into that later. But today we have, uh, we're going to be discussing instructional strategies and literacy and we're excited to have Miss Kristen Addington with us today. She is a special education teacher at Jenkins Middle High School and she's going to share with us how she's providing accommodations and modifications during her co-teaching and also provide us with an example of what SDI um, she's implementing in her small groups. And um, we're also going to be answering some questions, submitting from the Google survey that you guys filled out for us. And um, of course, if you have any questions during this, then just let us know. So thank you, Ms. Kristen, for being with us today. Um, so we'll just kind of get right into it. Um, and uh, I've talked with her earlier, um, I guess it was last week, this is Monday, so it was like last week, and I'm really excited with the information that she's got to share with you guys today. So Kristen, during this time that we're in, of course, uh, the use of technology is vital to student learning. So can you share with us what you are using to assist your students right now? Okay, um, so here at Jenkins, um, for the past several years, we've been one-on-one -on -one with our Chromebooks, um, so, you know, this has really been helpful since we've had to move to a more virtual uh, instructional model, but we do rely pretty heavily on technology for our instruction. Um, so two of the main things that my kids have been using uh, for a while now um, are two things on the Chromebook. And one of those is the speech to text option that they can use. So um, when they're given a task um, and they have to respond, maybe like a lengthy response, um, open-ended questions, things like that. Um, we've talked them to, um, they can just put their cursor where they want to respond, and when they go in and click a button, they can just speak um, into the microphone and it will type their response out for them. So um, that really seems to generate um, more detailed responses. You know, typically when they're only typing, we might see one or two sentences, but when they're able to speak, um, you know, they get more detailed. So, you know, it's a much better crafted response than that. So, and um, that's one thing. Second thing is the text reader. So for my students who receive a reader, um, uh, basically they can highlight and it could be, you know, a question, a paragraph, a passage. And whenever they highlight whatever it is they want read to them, they just click a button and it can read. So most of our kids have headphones with them during the day and they can use that in all their classes. So it's really um, a good way, like they're independent in doing this. So, you know, they're able to do it at home. They're able to do it in the classes that I'm not in to assist them. So that's been uh, really good. Um, and so, like I said, most of them know how to do this, but I also posted a tutorial video for my parents during this time. So, you know, we had a couple new students and I wasn't sure if they knew how to do that. So we put that on Google Classroom um, and so they can make sure they're use, utilizing those tools at home. Um, so, and um, I think I mentioned to you earlier, the text reader is also really beneficial for my students who are signed up for the ACT. So that's usually my sophomores and juniors. Um, the 
the structure of the text reader is pretty similar to the disc that gets sent by ACT. So, you know, it's good that they've had to, you know, be able to practice that all year. So, you know, if they take it toward the middle or end of the year, that's good that they've had that opportunity to kind of get that kind of um, text reader situation in and they know how to, you know, manipulate it and go back and reread and things like that. That is really good because also I know um, even at the elementary and middle level, you know, they're starting to do like the map testing on mm -hmm. Chromebooks and things. And I know just the, the thought of doing it on a computer versus pencil paper and not just uh, kids with disabilities, but uh, all kids, they, they have a, a fear of that. Um, mm -hmm. And so with you already implementing that already, so you're already eliminating that and getting ahead of the game with your students, they already have that comfort and you right. worked, um, you were able to go through um, navigating how to use it and get them comfortable and things like that. And I know one of the questions, uh, sometimes students, um, you know, one of the fears that teachers have is not being able to do that independently to, to work those features. But um, but you how how do you how did your students respond to, to learning how to do that? They picked up on it pretty quickly. Um, like I said, they they utilize it in most of their classes. So you know, reading's everywhere. Um, they have to have it in social studies and science, and you know, all during the day. So. Um, I think they really, I mean, it, it's been something really positive for teachers and students. That's awesome. Because I think, like you said, the ACT and then, um, it, you know, everything's kind of going toward that anyway. So that's really good. Um, you we mentioned the, uh, that you do co-teaching as well. You do resource and co-teaching. So can you describe your role in your co-teaching setting? Mm -hmm. So when we're in person, um, I do focus uh, mostly on language arts and math class. Um, so to meet student needs virtually, what we've tried to do is um, all the general ed teachers have added me in as a teacher on their Google classrooms. Um, and so by doing that, I can do all kinds of things and things that I would normally be doing with my students in the classroom anyway. Um, so, you know, I'm able to see when they submit an assignment or if they're not submitting assignments, um, I can comment and say, you know, well, maybe you might want to um, add this to your response and I can send that back to them. Um, I can see when they're asking private questions or if they're confused and, you know, um, I get, a, you know, an alert through my email so I can kind of um, head off problems maybe before they're just sitting at home, not knowing, you know, what to do. So, um, and then also on there, when you get ready to post an assignment, um, we can do things for my students. Um, like it'll ask, do you want to post to the whole class? We have check boxes that come up. So, um, you know, we can post to the entire class or we can click individual students. So. You know, some of my kids, they may get modified assignments or shortened assignments. And, you know, we can give them a different version or modified version of, you know, that day's work. And so, you know, none of these students are realizing what they're getting compared to what other students are getting in those classes. So that's been a really good way to, you know, not only just for kids with accommodations, but to differentiate for all of our students, you know, and give good kids too. Um, so, um, yeah, being able to do that discreetly and being a part of that whole group like that uh, mm -hmm. is very beneficial. And, and too, I think just having your presence, just having your kids knowing that you're in there too, mm -hmm. do you think that makes a difference for them as far as their participation? And uh, I think so. I and, think so. And I think they know that I'm going to be a consistent person that's going to follow up and you know, check in with them. So, you know, it's, it's been helpful. But we do a lot of co-teaching. You know, like I said, when, when the kids are back, you know, I started back this week, but I don't have my full caseload here. But, um, you know, I, I'm co-teaching um, the better part of the day, probably. So you've done that, like, here in the last couple of days. Because you, uh, to, to clarify, uh, Jenkins, um, you've been for, this was today the fourth day that you've had mm -hmm. in person? Uh, yes. well, it's a hybrid model, correct? Yes. Uh, but you have um, some of your kids are virtual, and then you guys come four days a week uh, in person. 
Yes. Um, but uh, so can you just briefly just share with us uh, what that's looking like? The past four days in your co-teaching, I know your ki kids are limited and things like that. So how, how is that working right now? Um, I mean, you know, I, I don't, like I said, I maybe have, um, you know, a smaller portion that are coming in person, but that allows me time to work with them, you know, spend more time with them and focus on the things that we need to do. Um, with smaller class size, distractions are, uh, you know, limited, and so that's also been very helpful. So, I mean, overall, it's it's been pretty positive for the few days that we've been back. That's awesome. And I wanted to bring out what you had mentioned earlier, too. I think it's very important in that, well, with any setting, but especially right now in this co-teaching, you mentioned consistency, you being a, con a constant person there for them, and, mm -hmm. um, and the reason, and then you have that relationship. So building those relationships that, that you have with your students is so valuable in not only just co-teaching language arts, but just, just with anything, the engagement piece, uh, and then just for them to have just uh, some um, comfort in knowing that they're not out there by themselves. Mm -hmm. So it makes a, makes a big difference. Um, and so, so in, and then the last thing, and uh, last big question for you is, you know, we said we to, that I was, uh, I can do make strategies. Woo! Should have brought my water today. <laughs> I knew I should have. <laughs> I debated, I didn't bring it. Uh, some uh, instructional strategies. So um, I, if you don't care, so tell us about the think aloud strategy that you said that you do with your small group when you have, have them. Okay, so uh, reading comprehension is, I mean, a huge focus for me. Um, I mean, I feel like all of my kids really benefit from that, but, um, you know, it's, <laughs> struggling readers don't automatically do the things that we do when we read. So modeling that process is really important. Um, so what I do is um, if I have a story or passage, I usually project that up on my screen so that they can all see that. Um, and then we just kind of start really working, uh, sort of picking apart what we see automatically. So, you know, we may begin with the title and say, well, you know, the title is this. And so um, I wonder if we can predict that the story is going to be about this because of, you know, what we're seeing up here already. Or if we have a, a picture that goes with that, that might provide us with some clues, um, you know, about where the story might take place. So. That's usually how we begin. Um, and then highlighting is one of the things I, I like to use. Um, so as we go along, you know, and I'm talking about what I'm thinking as I begin to read, um, I may highlight um, like a personal connection, um, maybe in blue. So, you know, I would say, well, you know, this story shows that, um, that she's at the beach. And so this, this makes me think about two years ago when my family vacationed at the beach. And, and these are some of the things that I experienced when I was there. You know, so I try to bring in those personal connections and they may be, you know, a certain color when we highlight. And then we may also bring in like a yellow highlighter. And um, as we keep going, I may say, well, um, I wonder why the author said this, or that confused me a little bit. So I'm gonna highlight that in yellow or make a note in the margin. So um, I just really try to be interactive as we go along. Um, and you know, when we get to the end, we summarize and discuss and, and maybe even through the midpoint of the story, um, depending on the, the length is, we, you know, we may stop and just kind of retell what's happening um, just to make sure, you know, in their own words that they're understanding so far. Um, so like I said, that, you know, that process is um, maybe just a consistent um, habit to get these kids in to monitor their own thinking. And I found that to be something really effective when you're working on reading comprehension strategies. I, so I, think aloud is one of my favorite things. I, I like think aloud because, um, you know, kids, they, like you said, they, they, they don't even know how to think. You, we have to tell them what to think and, and model that for them. But like you had mentioned, using the text features um, mm -hmm. and that background knowledge and making those personal connections, you know, doing all of those strategies, 
what that is what increases that comprehension and mm -hmm. by doing that modeling that think aloud strategy you know they watch you do it and then they're going okay she used the towel she used the picture okay mm -hmm. you know her experience at the beach so then you then they know that they can do those things as well and um, and then being able to re reflect back on what that after they've read through that being able to think back and and retell that so um i i, I me to I, the think aloud is is one of my favorites um and um then you um the um when you go through and then you just kind of see it down you know at your table and just highlight the text on paper do you use anchor charts or how or just highlight on like the like just paper like this or um when we first start out like i like i said i just usually put that up front and i, and I don't they don't have the paper in front of them just yet and I'm a, I like to walk around, so I'm kind of moving about the room and, you know, um, that tends to keep their attention too, instead of just sitting and um, going over it that way. So, but then, you know, eventually after we do this a few times, then I like to give them a copy so that they can start practicing, you know, on their own. And so we may go like paragraph by paragraph and then, you know, they, they tell me what they found or what they highlighted and we kind of just, you know, share that way. So that's that explicit instruction. So you mold it first, and then when you're walking around, you're doing it together. That's the I do it, and then we do it, and then you give them an example, and and then they do it, and then you just kind of monitor to check for their understanding as they as they do it. That is, yeah, I, I really, um, and and I think for comprehension, that is that is a big one. That's beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, one thing uh, I'm glad I took some notes because I wanted you I almost forgot the uh, website that you had shared um, that rewordify tell tell them about that because I think that is going to be a, a source that's going to be very beneficial okay so it, it's called rewordify.com and um, you don't have to sign up um, it's free so basically as soon as you type that in and the website comes up um, it's right there on the main page, you see a big yellow box. And what students can do is um, they can, if they're reading something, they can highlight and paste that into that yellow box. And when they get everything in there that they want, they can hit that rewordify text button at the bottom. And essentially it just basically does what it says. It rewords, um, you know, what they've pasted in there, but it simplifies it. So, um, you know, if the, if there's some difficult vocabulary words, um, or you know, maybe just the sentence structures changed around a little bit, it just sort of simplifies all of that. So, you know, the the meaning of um, the text is still there, but it's just been changed around a little bit to where they're probably going to be able to comprehend that a little bit easier. So um, sometimes, you know, my students will have an, a tab open on their Chromebook, and they'll just leave that up all day so they can just easily you know switch back and forth with their windows and so anytime you know that they if they've read something or reread it and they're still having you know trouble understanding you know what it is that they you know the comprehension is low then they'll use that and copy that over into the box and it maybe you know kind of presents it in a different way that's awesome and i, I did look at that uh, and, and it's so cool um so so they've got the um, text reader on their Chromebook and then they've also got this as well so it's in the and I like this reward font because like you said when it, it brings it down um, to a lower reading level then the students may be able they may not need that reader they can read it themselves and still be able to get the same content uh, I have actually dropped uh, that link into the Google Classroom so um, for those of you who are watching the um, it, it's in there, the class code uh, for um, the classroom is XLZLGGS. Uh, it's in the chat as well. And it's in the chat as well. Um, if you are not watching live, you can email me. And also, it's I put the class code on the flyer that was sent out. So we want you uh, we're trying our best to get get that out just so it's easy access because there's a ton of resources in there that's really good and this 
I mean, I played around with this rewordify. I mean, it was it was so cool. I loved it. <laughs> um, well, I just like that you you know they don't have to sign in. They they're not going to be forgetting a username and password like yeah. a lot of other you know things that they have. So. Yeah, they've got enough of that that they have to remember to sign in. So that's one less thing that they have to. I think we've had some people check it out already. We've got uh, Sharon Thorns where says, "Wow, can't wait to try Rewordify with my students." Okay. And Dion says it's a great resource. Awesome, thank you, Kristen. Um, and this is so I, I like having um, your perspective because you, I mean, you do high school. Um, you is it nine through twelve or? all you have every all of them right and um so i know a lot of times um you know we we talk about the elementary a lot so just having this uh middle high uh is very beneficial but this can also be used for elementary but this is very it it tags on to that um i want to take this time just a little bit uh to talk about um because kristen had talked about the Think aloud strategy. Um, this, which is also in that classroom, um, these books right here, the reading strategies book, and also the it's the same, it's the writing strategies. They um, these are two awesome resources. They're teacher friendly. You don't have to use them front to back. But those the strategy that Kristen described is in here along with 300 strategies with that. So I have a link um to those books and there's actually a couple videos of her going through the book and talking about them and things like that so if you have um you know if you don't if you need something to help with your reading comprehension and also your writing with the writing process i highly recommend these books if if you don't have any other comprehension books on your shelf you need you need these so um but um and also, there's a think aloud checklist that I put in the classroom. Um, I, I printed a copy out, but what I like about it is um, it, uh, you have, you probably can't see it, but I'm gonna hold it up anyway, just to, you know, it's just like a little check, it's a check sheet. So you have the predicting, questioning, visualizing, goes all the way down to clarifying, summarizing, and reflection, and making those connections. So that's what, Kristen, you didn't even have this checklist, and you hit about every one of them already. So it has those listed, and then you just put a tally mark for each time that that strategy is being used when you go over this text. And then there's some keywords over here. So if you have, um, if you're going through those, like Kristen was telling us earlier, some things that she had asked her, her students, well, sometimes you may draw a blank or you, you know, the student doesn't respond to what the couple that you have. There's some keywords over here that you can say, well, you know, I think this is this way because, or um, I, in this next part, I think. So it gives you about three, four, sometimes five examples of what you can say for your students to get them to thinking. Um, so, for example, on making the connections, it'll say, um, this reminds me of, or this is similar to, and, um, and then the reflecting. And I think reflecting is very hard. Um, I think that's, that is a learned skill that I think we take um, for granted. Uh, and, and I'm going to be honest with you all. Um, we've had, we went through some trainings that's caused, a, you know, have asked us to reflect on things, and I'm going, oh, wow. You know, so if you don't practice that a lot, it's it's difficult. And um, so there's some things here too that would kind of get you started. It's like, well, maybe next time I need to do this or things. So it's really cool, but this checklist is also in the classroom. And, um, but I just think um, this is, the Think Aloud strategy is definitely a good one to start with because um, it's, it, well, it's very, it has a big impact, first of all, and, um, and, and it seems like students uh, respond to that one better. Is that what you have found, Kristen? I think so. Uh, it's just they're interactive and, and they're just taking a moment to think about. Um, or, I mean, I think really, I think it's kind of nice that you can see how other people react when they read something, you know, and it's and it's like, well, maybe that's not strange that I, that I thought that, or maybe, you know, maybe I'm not the only one that, um, thought that too when I read that part, you know, so it kind of, um, 
I don't know, it, it just, it includes their thoughts and, you know, they know that they can vary and that's okay. Or, you know, they could be the same as someone else and that's okay too. Yeah, that's awesome. Dion has also shared that the author of these books also has a uh, Facebook group Ooh. that sh she actually leads herself. So that might be someone, something someone may want to check out. It says it's a, a reading strategies group on Facebook that is led by Jennifer. Well, and that's what I said. It's, uh, and I, I practiced this last name and I forget it, but I think it's Saravalo. Saravalo. I'm pretty Sounds sure good. Jennifer Saravalo. <laughs> Um, and um, I'll go through it. I'll, I'll practice it, but it's just it doesn't it doesn't flow real good. But but she's uh, she goes it's uh, um, she's very helpful with like with the Facebook book group, and then she has those videos. And um, but like when I put those links in there for the, that just the book walk, then there's links on just different things that she's even done through um, through this, the COVID to kind of give ideas for teachers too. So it's just, I mean, just when you tap into her, you're tapping into a lot of uh, resources there. So, um, but it was, um, but, I, but I love these, my, my favorites. <laughs> I think everyone loves those. And I think that any time that we share those, people are, we get awesome feedback on it. So they must be really, really good books. Yeah. And if you're watching this and you look at these and have questions, um, don't hesitate to contact us because um, we can help you go through these and guide you through them, um, kind of coach you with them a little bit and show you some things um, on how to do that. So, um, but um, I think it's about time to wrap up. Do we yes, have any more questions um, anywhere or comments mm -hmm. from anybody? No, I th I've been trying to monitor the chat as we go. That was the last one from me on about the Facebook. Okay. All right. Um, well, I guess we will uh, go ahead and start closing up then. Uh, we want to thank everybody for joining today. Uh, I'm excited that we learned about how Kristen's providing the accommodations and having those resources mm -hmm. for her students. And I love the discussion about the think aloud strategy, about how to get the students thinking and um, being able to uh, realize about their thinking being same and different and that's okay. Um, if, uh, again, for deeper understanding and for resources, join that classroom, uh, email me, chastity.craft at theholler.org. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions that you have or help you in any way. And, um, and Kristen, I just I can't thank you enough for joining us because I always love to have teachers to hear other teachers. That's what we wanted to do. And uh, I just thank you. I cannot thank you enough for joining us today. <laughs> um, and um, and I get and you can we also have um, other our if you have missed our other podcasts, we had those on our website. You go on the holler.org and there you hover over the KBEC tab and then the special KBEC special education tab. We have a button that has podcasts. You can watch the literacy and math behavior and low incidents. They're all on there. And, um, and they're also, of course, in the classroom. And um, if um, next month, we're going to be talking about explicit instruction. So that should be fun and interesting because uh, everything is pretty much goes around. Good teaching goes around explicit instruction. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that next month. And um, I guess and that's it. So until next time. We'll holler at you later. Thank you.